Let's polish my 4G63 cylinder head. Cylinder head porting and polishing has to be one of the most controversial topics I've come across in the motorsports world. Some people think smooth is best, some people think rough is best, some people think golf ball is best, and some pretty well-known head porters believe polishing cylinder heads in general is a complete waste of time. And that may be true in their eyes, but I believe they're only looking at one part of the equation. Something all the veteran head porters can agree on though, if you go too smooth on the intake ports, it will cause some issues with the fuel atomization in the port and lead to some tuning issues. Now what this tells me, the smoother the port is, the faster the port velocity will be. And as a man who completely obsesses over boost response, improving port velocity is extremely high on my list. I've already built a 2.2 liter stroker, but I am going from a 52 millimeter turbo up to a 57 millimeter turbo, which means my turbo will spool later. So if there's any small things I can do to bring that boost response down, even if it's just 100 RPM, I'm going to do it. My power goal for this next setup is around 600 horsepower, but more importantly, I'm looking for my turbo to be fully spooled between 3500 and 4000 RPM. That is the main goal. And I think the reason most head porters don't consider this is because their main goal is just peak horsepower. But for someone like me who does autocross and time attack, I want to build an all around competitive build and I really want that early boost response and a linear power band and that's what I'm aiming. Now please. Please do not take me as some super experienced head porter and polisher. I am simply a mechanically inclined dude who is extremely stubborn and does everything myself. I don't have all the answers, I just make the best educated judgment calls I can within reason to try and achieve the results that I want. So I'll give you a quick overview on how I polish this 4G63 cylinder head. I'll explain the exhaust and intake port finishes and how I came to that decision to do those finishes. So on the exhaust ports, I purposely left all the carbon and soot buildup in the exhaust port. That way I could kind of use it like a coloring book. First, I started out with 60 grit. And once I got every last speck of black carbon buildup on the exhaust port and removed all of the casting flash lining the walls, the divider, and under the valve seat in the bowls, then it was time to move up to 80 grit. Now, something a lot of head porters say is to lower the floor and raise the roof. Now the two areas I spent the most time working on were the bowls and the turn aka the short side. On the short side under the valve seat inward it felt pretty notchy. I spent a good bit of time blending the valve seat into the short side making sure it had a smooth radius. This is something you have to do by feel and I can't really show you with the picture. Now when it comes to the bowls that's where the casting flash and defects seem to be the worst. You got to be real patient here and you might be using one sanding roll per bowl. I spent a lot of time blending the valve seat into the bowl getting a nice smooth transition. Using 60 grit is the longest pass and every time you step up in a grit it progressively gets faster. So make sure you have a bunch of 60 grits on deck because you will be using those the most. From here on out it's smooth sailing. Step up to your 80 grit, spend some time and just color the aluminum to where you get it uniform looking. And then repeat this process for 120 and 240 grit. Now onto these scotch Bright polishing pads we have from 180 grit up to 600. And here's a little trick I'll show you all to trim down the pads when they are getting stuck in the middle of the port. I get the pencil grinder moving at a good speed and then I just take a fresh razor blade and I run it and trim it just as you see right here. There we go. Now from here on out it goes even faster and I am stopping at 600 grit on the exhaust port. Majority of the shops and headquarters I talked to said get the exhaust ports as smooth as you want without any issues. I believe the exhaust gases moving faster through the cylinder head will improve my spool time. Also a smoother port should prevent carbon buildup and help keep the port smoother for longer. Now on the intake ports we're repeating the entire process but it's going to go a lot faster. We are only going to do one pass of 60 grit, that way we do not have any issues with tuning down the road or fuel atomization. It should still be rough enough but I have improved the port by getting rid of the casting flash, blending the bowls into the valve seats and blending the turn in the valve seat as well. As I stated earlier my main goal for this cylinder head, my main goals for the cylinder head polishing is increasing port velocity, right? I could have taken you know, one of these bits and really hog the thing out and try and up the CFM, but consistency across the ports and not messing something up, the risk starts to go up, right? 
When I'm using a 60 grit sand roll, I am taking away a little bit of material. Like I said, I spent more time on the turn and the bowls and getting pretty much the valve seat to kind of blend into the turn in the bowls. I spent a lot of time there more than in the throat, right? In the throat, all I mostly focused on was the casting flashes on the side and on the divider. Dave from Head Games just recently went on the Street Alpha podcast and pretty much said, what I've done here is pointless. And you know what? He may be right. He may be right, but I'm in experimental phase of my life where I want to venture out and try new things. Um, but the key difference potentially, right, between me and most automotive enthusiasts, car guys, motorsports guys, I extremely care about that low end torque and I wanna do everything I can to try and improve it. Sure, 60 grit on the intake ports, but the exhaust ports, it's kind of unlimitless on how fast you wanna go or how smooth you want to make them. And if that improves my boost response by 100 RPM, then I'll be damned, I'm super happy with that. Improving boost response is a game of inches to me. And I'm willing to go down any little extra avenue to try and keep bringing that RPM range down that I'm hitting full desired boost. I am going up to a 57 millimeter turbo from a 52 millimeter, and I wanna be able to offset that jump any way I can and still trying to keep my full boost target under 4,000 RPM, ideally closer to 3,500 RPM. <clears throat> so here is a junk Evo 8 cylinder head. This is the one I initially practiced on, right? And I kind of started to hone my skills. I kind of experimented with a bunch of stuff. And what I wanted to do, I wanted to be able to send this head off to a shop that can measure CFM and port velocity. Most, <clears throat> most importantly, port velocity. And I did reach out on Motorsport pages. I reached out to some people. I called a bunch of shops in the Texas area and uh, no one was willing to let, I was gonna pay them. I was willing to pay them, you know, anywhere three, four, 500 bucks to get this head tested to see the results between 60 grit, 80 grit, 120 grit, um, you know, up to 600 grit on the exhaust ports to see if it actually improves port velocity at all. Uh, one, all the local shops, no one really had port velo uh, velocity probes or knew how to use them. And the people I did kind of get in touch with were like, mm, like, you know, they spent all that money on those machines and I get it and they didn't want to me just to spend a couple hundred bucks to get that data. I'm, I am still looking for someone that I could send this test head off to, I will do I will do extreme differences, right? You got four exhausts and we got four intake and we do, we can do massive differences between all of them and really kind of see which one flows best, which one's faster, et cetera, and stuff like that. I would love to do that. So if you're interested in that, please reach out to me and I would love to make that happen. We can collab, maybe shoot a video, something like that. Thanks so much for watching. And if you wanna see me bring this Evo back to life and have it spooling nastier than ever, Make sure you follow along, hit that subscribe button, and notification bell for future videos. Y'all have a good one now. Peace out.